Yo, 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 can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. How you been? Been good. Been good. Still getting into the swing of um the 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 calisthenics and, and lifting. So adding more weights into the to the workouts, but but doing good. Um getting back into the swing of things, being able to get up earlier and all that good stuff, not being as tired from from the lifts and stuff. Yeah, I would say it'd be kicking your butt once you start adding the weights into it, bro. Like, <laughs> be tired, be snacking. You snacking yet? No, uh, I, I mean, I snack a little, but I mean, we replaced like the big snack snacks with like trail mix and, and fruit. So I'm not doing like any crazy, crazy snacking. And I'll try to save like I'll limit, watch my calories throughout the week so I can kind of have, you know, um, I don't really want to call it a cheat day, but really I don't have to follow the script over the weekend because I put in the work during the week mm, good point. without feeling good point. like guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> I say take advantage of them cheat days, man. You can't be too strict and you're going to binge. Nah, you know, nah. Yeah, that's what I tell everybody. I'm like, hey, you, you got to feel OK with um, you can't beat yourself up for, you know, splurging or whatever or the cheat day, because you, as long as you put in the work in. So I think I think that's a good point to have. Like you have to factor in that sometimes you want to fail at your diet or you're not going to feel like working out. But yeah. just don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. You know what I mean, you still got to go the next day and, and kind of get it together. I can tell you for a fact, I did not feel like working out today at all. And then like 30 minutes after 30 minutes into the workout, I was like, OK, I got some energy. So mm-hmm. I was straight. I was I was good to go. So no. Cool, 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 cool. All right. What are we starting with today? So let's start with two cents. So kind of touch on touch on that. Um, oh, wait, before you get into that. This disclaimer. disclaimer, everybody, we are not uh, financial advisors. We are not your health experts. We are not your uh your counselors, we're not your therapists. So everything we're saying here is just our opinion. Please do your own due diligence. This is not financial advice. This isn't therapy. This isn't any of that stuff. This is just two cousins talking about stuff that they care to talk about. And um, hopefully you can take some stuff away from that. <laughs> and this, of course, is sponsored by the ID Defender, YFS Academy, and 30 Day Ray.com. Okay, now let's get back into it. All right, so we're gonna start with start with the two cents since it's Tuesday. Um, my two cents is an empire isn't built in a day, but rather it is built consistently every day. Mm. Um, so I I know I used to get. I said, what made you want to go with that one? Um, just just thinking about fitness. So as you asked me about that, I was thinking all day like I I didn't really want to work out either, but you know when I look at the results. Um, it's like, Hey, I remember when I first start working out again, I'm like, okay, I did, I did a workout. So I'm about to be, I'm about to have a six pack. I'm about to look how I want to look. And it's like, no, um, <laughs> it is going to take, it's going to take a while, but as long as I'm consistent every day, that's just in like, not just fitness and life in general. You know, I think the biggest thing is being able to wake up and just be able to consistently attack every, every day. So I think we kind of look ahead and think, whether it's the job or fitness or whatever it is that, you know, we're going to hit a home run right away and be right where we want to be. And it's, you know, just with consistency every day, um, you'll see, you'll see those, those same gains. I think you can also translate that into investing. I think a lot of people were looking at 2021 and 2020 when things were taking off and you can pretty much just, you can literally just close your eyes and pick any crypto coin and it was going 10 X or 15 X. You can, in the bull market, not many stocks went down at all during that time frame. So you probably saw it on your timeline, you know, every, the, you, the people who were riding the, the shorter bus than you going to school all of a sudden was telling you what to invest in as far as stocks and crypto and so on and so forth. But now, as you see, you know, those people aren't, as loud anymore during this recession slash bear market that we're going into, which leads me back to the principles of long-term investing, right? If you're dollar cost averaging into quality companies, a quality index, yeah, you're down, but you ain't down 80, 90%. Like some of these, as for lack of a better term, shit coins are shitty companies, right? So if you're consistent in your approach and you block out the noise, whether it's fitness, whether it's your budget, whether it's getting better at your job, whether it's investing, 
in the long run, you pretty much go, you should be on the top. You should be on top in the long run, right? So I think that was a good one to throw in there. Sorry, I, I try to make it financial, but I see where you was going with it. Yeah, I was trying to trying to turn it financial. It, it leads into a lot of a lot of areas, but um, I say the first thing that that I'll that I'll bring up is is borrowing, whether it's from you know, uh, I know we talk about bank borrowing, but borrowing mm. from from friends or, or family. So my question is, when would you loan or borrow a big sum of money from someone or to someone without a written agreement? I, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Um, before my default answer always was like no, but it, it truly depends on the person and what they're trying to accomplish. So I don't like when people just come to me like, let me get a hundred dollars until Friday. That's real forty dollars until Friday. It's real crackish to me. Like I don't feel as though that my hundred or my forty is contributing to something that's going to make you a better individual. But if you come to me and you're trying to buy a house, right? And we've I've had this happen with some family members. You're trying to buy a house and you're you got to pay off your car, right? It might be eight grand or 10 grand or something like that. These are actually real numbers. In one instance, the like you you're there, you're at the finish line, you're trying to be a better person, and you reach, you've done everything you, you worked the hours, you didn't save, like you're not blowing your money on nothing stupid. But it's like sometimes you bump against something you're like, man, I wish I just had that family member, that cousin, that friend that could just put the hand out. So in my mind, I kind of in recently reversed my whole stance on that. At first, it was like, nope, you should have been budgeting. It ain't your time yet. Now, I've literally helped probably four or five people privately just get homes by just giving them the cash because they like this close to getting there or they got a car loan. And they didn't know that they were going to be in a position to be able to buy a home in two years. And now this car loan is screwing up their DTI. Here, man, pay off this 10 grand. Pay me back a 0% interest loan over the next two years. And like sometimes you need that individual or that friend or that family member to be there to help you out. And I think that's also the beauty of getting your money up, getting your money right. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can possibly step in in certain situations like that to help people out. So, uh, Long story, a little less long. I would say it completely depends on the person, your relationship with them, and what exactly they need the funds for. Because even if you have a written agreement, right, I can agree to pay you back. And if I don't pay you back, the only way I can get my money is by taking you to court. That's lawyers, that's six mm -hmm. to 12 months in there. It got to be a good deal. Going The paperwork ain't going to save you if the person is a shitty person, right? So right. It, it really got to make sense even before the paperwork going into it. And then secondly, you got to be comfortable with that money not coming back. Like if that person, you did your due diligence, you cool with them, they're getting something that's going to propel them for whatever makes you feel good. And they stiff you, you still got to be cool with the, all right, it is what it is. I learned a valuable lesson about this person who I thought I trusted. So I'm not going to do that again. So um, that's my answer on that one. It's, it's, it's a little wishy-washy. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm in that same boat as far as because I thought about it, I'm like, nah, you know, I mean, yeah, I would you, with, with the amount. But then it's like, hey, it really depends on the person and if what this is being used for. Um, mm -hmm. Now, why I, why I brought this up, I was reading an article um, where a guy borrowed ten thousand dollars from his brother mm -hmm. with a two hundred dollar a month repayment plan. They mm -hmm. fell out and then the brother wanted the money back in full. Um, you can't do that. You can't like because I beat you in mad. You want all your money back now. Like we 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 playing spades. You reneged. I called you out on it, and now you're gonna bring up the 10k loan that I gave you that, that you gave me that I'm paying you back to. I'm giving you your 200 dollars back, just like I told you every month. You can't just change the game on me. Like you get that's a verbal agreement, right? Like say if we had it written down, you can't get mad at me and switch it up. Like your mortgage company can't get mad at you next month. And be like yo, give me give me everything right now. That's not how that works. That's foul, yo. That's lame. That, that, like, that's I, very foul. That, that will cause me to... Not, I don't got a brother, but that will cause me to not fuck with you at all. Like, that is crazy to me. That's super slimy. Yeah, like, you just... You switched up, like, that over... You you, you got upset I crossed you up in front of your girl. <laughs> laid, laid you up, filleted you. You mad because I scored 30 on you and got 10 boards and, and five assists. And you had mad turnover. So now you're trying to get your... You're trying to get it back in blood like that. No, that's lame. That's lame. You can't do that. Yeah, that's. You can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I was absolutely. Like, wow. No bueno. 
Yeah, matter of yeah, fact, yeah. if I'm the brother, I'm paying you back two hundred dollars. I'm giving you money on time, but what you're not going to do is accelerate the loan. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have gave it to me, and then a year later, because you tight, thinking you can just get it all back quickly. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, I that's that's that was my thinking, and I was like, yo, that that's wild. I'd be upset too. Like, nah, I got. I wouldn't even be upset. I'll laugh at you and say, no, you don't get two hundred on the first, James. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just how that's gonna roll. Call you by your full government, yeah. your middle name, Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> gonna take this two hundred and shut the hell up. All right. So this next one is is interesting. Um. So the question is: Would you be a loud, a quiet, or loud billionaire? I'm quiet, baby. I don't listen. You know me. No. I have a phone that only three people got the phone number to. <laughs> like yeah. everybody else got a, a 703 number that's not my real number <laughs> that's yeah. not my real number at all so if the only time i will be loud is if i need it to be loud to sell something mm-hmm. and even that makes me a little icky but unfortunately that's the society we live in right people like the fancy stuff people like to see the numbers and that's going to attract a certain demographic but if I'm a billionaire, if I'm and this this was about Elon, I believe, right? If I'm yeah. up, 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 like I can create my own reality, my own world. I just don't think I will be. I, I don't think I will care to be on Twitter so much or or TikTok so much and so on and so forth. Like I think my and I will be quiet because you know how much blowback you like. Think about it for a second. Let's not even say Elon money. Let's just say. Beyonce money, right? Or Oprah money. If they say anything, there's half the population that's going to shit on you. For my mental health wise, I I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't even want to be famous, right? Like I will be so quiet that you wouldn't even know like, damn, he's a billionaire. Yep. Yeah. You know why? Because the, the other side of that, I wouldn't want to be famous. I wouldn't be loud. It's because I like to do regular people's stuff sometimes. Like, I don't want to always look presentable. I don't want, I want to just go to the movie theater and sit in the back. Like, imagine being LeBron James or something like that. You can't even, you got to have a haircut at all times. You, your wife and your kids got to look a certain way. I don't want y'all to know me. Nope, 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 nope. And number, the, the other reason is it comes with intentions, right? Like when people know you have money and they know how to reach you and they know how to get under your skin, they're going to do that. Mm-hmm. consistently like this the cyber bullying is real like they probably won't say it to your face but now they sucking your kids or oh, your wife look ugly your kid look this way so now you're gonna have to talk at a dinner table with your family while why people are saying bad things about daddy nope 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 nope. i'm quiet as a mouse won't hear from me i'll be kendrick kendrick you <laughs> when you hear from me is when something coming yeah and something then, I'm, about the then i'm disappearing again that's how it would be that's peace peace yeah, very very much peaceful <laughs> i I thought about it. I mean, as coming up, because I always wanted to play professional basketball. So I'm like, okay, I know that come with fame. But as I got older, I was like, I don't want to be famous. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be able to go outside and not have to like, paparazzi. You, you see somebody outside your window with a camera, like, just waiting for you to walk cool out. The on door. That. Not, right. So, you know, and, and I like having, being able to have a free opinion. Like, you know, where I can say stuff and with without it coming, coming with with repercussions as far as, you know, an opinion on something. Um, I want to be so, heard, but I don't want to be seen, if that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. I, you know, and I, I, I'll be quiet, too. You know, I, I I don't want the fame. I just, you know, you wouldn't know. OK, what he up to now? Even now I'm quiet. Like I used to be very loud with recovery. But I've taken a more quiet approach and just, hey, just put my head down, 10 toes, 10 toes down and just chipping away at it. And then I'll pop back out, show you how I'm doing. And then I'm right back to the back cave. Yeah, I see. I mean, even like even if you were to come into let's flip this to like a, a money topic. Right. So even if you was to come into a nice bonus, I don't think that should be put out there for the world to see. Right. Like one, one, you don't know how you don't know who's looking at you, you know, who's scheming, you don't know none of that stuff nowadays. But like, I think people really set themselves up to catch an L by posting and, and talking so much and being so loud. I know somebody going to say, oh, 
Uh, you wouldn't have to move in silence if you had winners around you. That's not how that works. <laughs> That's just not how that works. Like you could just be minding your business and catch a stray. Like right. it, 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 so, nah. <laughs> but that's just me, though. Like that's me. Like, and a lot of stuff I do for me, right? I always find it funny when if you got to post so much about it, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for you know what I mean the likes and, and the comments and adulation? Or are you doing it for yourself? Because I can tell you right now, when you get dressed for yourself and you do all that stuff for yourself, you don't really got to take a selfie of it. You know what I mean? Right. You don't really got to post it on Twitter. You don't really got to do it. Like a lot of the a lot of times when I did anything like that, it literally was like a rollout. It's, it's I treat all this stuff like entertainment. Like, oh, okay, I'm being active because eventually I'm going to have something that I want people to see. But I don't need you to see Dominic every day. Right. Yeah, I, I saw a post. It was like you know um, something said stop posting uh, when you go on vacation and just enjoy the moment. Then the response was, "I'm a one. I want these haters to see what I'm doing." And I'm like, why, "Why? Right." So, so once again, if you're doing something for a hater, you're not doing it for yourself, right? At all, and you're not doing it for yourself at all. That is so weird to me. Like, if you have a if you have a hater, why would you ever want to do something to get under their skin? They don't give two shits about you. I'm going to tell you that right now. They don't care about you at all. They're just miserable and they want to see you miserable. So if you don't like the shirt, like it's like the designer stuff, right? A lot of people just wear that to appear to be bigger or more successful than they are. Mm -hmm. Where truth be told, a lot of the real designer stuff ain't got no labels on it. Like if you look at all the studies, I know I'm taking this completely left, but if you look at all the studies, there's like, they put the big old logos on the stuff to attract a certain demographic because that certain demographic truly shouldn't be in the stuff. And they're just, it's a cash grab. So once again, it's like to be seen. So why would you want to be seen to a hater? That makes right. zero sense to me. So I'm going to just, just, just for the people, whether you want to be quiet or loud, just, just be yourself at the end of the day and didn't do, do it for you. you. Yeah. Do it I'm for saying you. if you a loud person, be a loud person. That's just saying that ain't my, that's not, that's, I'm not built for that. I can't keep that up consistently. All right. So let's get into the to the nitty gritty. Right. So is the housing market about to crash? We've been seeing, mm. you know, there's a lot going on with, with the housing market, uh, with the interest rates rising and, and every, the prices of everything going up, gas reaching almost five dollars. Um or yeah, six dollars depending on where you where you are. Um, is that gonna is is those things that, that's going on now going to cause the housing market to crash? I think the housing market is is, is going to be slower. Uh, but crash is it's not going to crash like stocks crash, right? Stocks are quick. Like news comes, you down 10%, you down 5%, and it can go back up. Housing lags really, really slowly. It could be six to 12 months. But more importantly, I think it hangs on unemployment. Like when people start... Well, a lot of the tech companies, a lot of companies are freezing hiring, which is telling. Um, but I don't think it's going to crash like next week. So the feds are going to stop buying bonds in June, I believe. So six months after that, you have a real telltale sign on what 2023 is going to look like. Mm -hmm. However, I go to the gym every day, uh, work out with a guy, let's call his name A. And they're actively trying to buy a house. So what happens is they're putting in offers, they're losing. And then all of a sudden this month, prices start coming down. And then there's no more multiple bids on homes. And then banks are now bulking at appraisal values. Like I believe there was a, somebody wrote that they put in an offer for 30K over or whatever. The, the home that they're purchasing is now going for 30K lower than what it was listed for. So now... How housing is going to work, everything starts to slow down, but it's going to take some time for the sellers to realize that we are no longer in the market that we were in January and February. And it's going to take a little time for all that stuff to trickle down. So I think there will be a correction for sure. You can't have two to the, the three years of the appreciation that we got to not have some form of correction. Like that don't make no sense. It don't just keep going up like that. Housing typically tracks maybe 1% above inflation or so. So when it should have been increasing at three and a half percent or five percent, you're increasing by 10, 15, 20 percent. You got a problem. Um, 
But something that we didn't show in here is all the short term stuff, right? Like, I, I uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna save this for the next part we get into. But I think that's going to contribute to the eventual housing correction slash crash once we get to that part. So my short answer <laughs> is yes. I think I think 2023 is going to show what 2022 should have been if the Fed stopped buying their the bonds and, and propping everything up. But I, I don't think the the housing market is going to keep being sizzling hot anymore. Nope, that's yeah. that's done. So I don't think so either. Um, but the 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 scenario that was on on Reddit was um, it said how house buyer is having a buyer's remorse because the market market slowdown. So guy was selling his house. They had somebody bid on it and they kind of, they started to have buyer's remorse uh, and looking around because the they were saying that the house uh, was, was selling for 30 K lower than uh, it was worth lower 30 K lower than when they entered the contract. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, well, to me, I'm looking at this like, whoa, you can, I didn't know that you can do this in the housing process. Um, but it looks like the guy wouldn't be so out of luck because he would be able to keep the the deposit if they were. Yeah, to but do the this. earnest deposit ain't a lot, though. Think about right. it for a second. If you're a home seller and you can sell for, say, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars versus five hundred and twenty thousand dollars, you're you're literally losing 30 grand. Yeah. Just like that. For most people are putting down 1% of the purchase price. So as the buyer, okay, I'm either going to take a 30 grand hit, I'm going to take this 5k hit and possibly be able to rebuy this house in 30 days if it goes back on the market or buy another house because housing prices are going down. So it really kind of depends on how that works. I believe you can sue somebody for performance, but that's going to take some time though. Like you can't just walk from a deal unless, uh, all contingencies are met. But I think also on Reddit, what happened is the bank is now balking at the appraisal, which oh, is yeah. funny because typically appraisers walk hand in hand with the seller's agents. I'm not sure if you knew this, but appraisers are typically independent folks who um, they don't want to lose out on money, right? So if you're an appraiser and you're looking at these comps and you're like, ah, this house ain't worth 550, even though you've got a contract for it, and you bring it in at 500. You got a couple options. One, you got a chance that you ain't never going to get called back again. <laughs> Two, um, then the buyer and the seller have to now negotiate again. It looks like the bank is stepping in like, nah, we ain't going to move forward with this one. You're going to have to work it out. So that happened with October of 2020 when we got uh, my mother-in-law home. The, the home appraised for like five grand. It was like 10 grand under what we were purchasing it for and the seller was just like no because at that time they can put it back on the market and get that easy mm -hmm. so we only got it because it was an all-cash deal so it was either go back on and that had 30 offers on it you ain't getting that no more like there's no more 30 offer 40 offer bids anymore so now sellers gonna have to wake up but um that's the scenario which the seller has you can take the earnest money deposit but if it loses based off the appraisal contingency, which a smart real estate buyer's agent will have in there for you, then you can just walk. Hey, it don't appraise. They're not willing to come down on the price. We're done. And you get your earnest money deposit back for that. Wow. Yeah, that, that was interesting. But I mean, I, I do think that the, the housing market is bound to, to cool down. Like, like you said, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but I do think at some point, it's I mean, fam, there's no more Bitcoin money. It's <laughs> like, think about it. When when you can drop Bitcoin in 2018 was five thousand. It went up to sixty thousand dollars. A lot of people was literally just cashing out their Bitcoin in their stocks. Like the stock market went up like, uh, like twenty percent, twenty one percent, twenty eight percent. So you made so much money off your investments that people were just taking that money out and buying cribs. Now, what happens when you're down, you know, 40% on, on your Bitcoin or more, or you're down 20% on your stock portfolio or more, and now there's a freeze in hiring and gas has gone up to $6 and food is, is high as hell and there's a war, you start to think, huh, maybe I should just stack my bread and just kind of wait this out before I make any hasty moves. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be doing that pretty soon, which is going to impact housing. 
for sure. I agree mm-hmm. with that. I agree with that. And I think that was a, you know, perfect oop into the next thing where um, is Bitcoin in your four allowing Bitcoin to be in your 401k? Is that a good idea? Um, me personally, because I'm not into the crypto space yet. So I'll rather after seeing the, the drop me personally, I mean, I think it's a good idea for people who are in the crypto space to be able to do so with their 401k. But me personally, I don't think I will be moving into that space in my 401k, not not wagering my retirement fund in, in the crypto space. Now, if I have some funds in a, in a different in a different account, then, yeah, I'll be you know interested in in having some some positions in crypto, but not using my retirement fund. This was this was an interesting one because my first thought went to the asset doesn't matter. I'm more concerned on how they're going to hit you in the face with the fees Yeah, because how 401k plans typically work. You are pigeonholed into the investments that your HR, your management selected from a certain company. Some 401ks are trash like they are horrible because it. Let's backtrack. A 401k is just an investment vehicle, right? What goes into the investment vehicle oftentimes, sometimes is trash, right? Because you, if you just got a Vanguard 401k with 0.01% fees, you're golden. You're perfect there. If you got Fidelity, you're golden because they have some low alternatives there. But if you just get this 401k from some of these independent companies and they make their money with front end loads and back end loads and things like that, then we got a problem. So it's not necessarily Bitcoin. It's not gold. It's not uh, the stocks and bonds that cause the issue because that's fine. It's the fees that might come with it. Now we're talking about low fees, low transaction fees. It's very similar to what you can do in your traditional IRA because you control it. And I have a problem with with Bitcoin being there. Yes, it has major drawdowns, but you also get a significant amount of rewards for it. I would just tell you that if you're close to retirement, maybe that's not an asset class that you would be in, right? Mm -hmm. Just like if you were far away from retirement, you're not going to be in all cash. You're most likely going to be in some form of equity stock, right? It could be Apple, Microsoft, or small cap, Palantir, Zoom, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So I'm not mad at Bitcoin being in 401ks. I'm just curious on how how investment firms are going to put the fees on it because somebody need to cut in some some way, shape or form. And a lot of folks are saying that you should be in 5% cryptocurrency, which is cool, right? Yeah. If you don't got an appetite for it, maybe you go 1%. Um, but my beef isn't with crypto. I'm just curious on how the powers that be are going to make their money. <laughs> like, how are you going to, there's nothing wrong with for 401k. My beef is the crazy fees that some of these companies align with um, when they're going to the investment folks. Like literally look at your 401k. Some of them are great. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are trash. I worked at a company. I had a horrible 401k. All the fees was like 3%. You taking 3% of my money per year. That's an L. Yeah, that's a huge L. Three our, our front load, front load, back loads. Where what the the company will do was, uh, they will churn. They will try to churn the four hundred one k offerings every year. Well, why would they do that? Well, if I make money when you put money in this particular account, and I churn it, as in I sell it and say, hey, we got new funds that you can invest in. You have to take the money out. And you have to put it in. If I get five percent going in and five percent going out, I'm killing you in fees. The devil is definitely in the details. The same thing with life insurance. So I tell people, oh, well, I got a person, my, I got a whole life life insurance plan. I could be my own bank. The devil's in the details. What are your fees, though? I have no problem with the vehicle. They all get us to the same destination. But if one vehicle come with a 10% tax and one come with a 0.01% tax and we invested in the same thing, who you think going to win? The lower fees. fees. So no beef this. against Bitcoin. I'm just curious on how they are going to attack it when it comes to fees. At the, we touched on everything. Fees for everybody. Uh, I would say sometime last month we touched on how fees, you know, everybody has some kind of fees you need to look out for. So that, that's a good point. Sorry. So so gas. 
Gas, I mean, I know I touched on it a little earlier, but they said that gas prices could climb to six dollars a gallon or even higher by August. And you know, it's it's interesting with with everything going going up. I I think that you know now is the time to really adjust your 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 budget or see if you can cut out on on driving when when unnecessary you know um i know we can we can sit here and the, the, they want you to to go out and get moved to those evs right now i'm not me i'm i might forget to put my phone on the charger at night sometimes so <laughs> me with a with an all electrical vehicle i don't know how that is that will work out but what i would do is you know either a hybrid or or i'm just budgeting you know to adjust i'm i'm pre-planning you know i'm i'm proactive instead of reactive right so if they say this okay i might have to tweak my budget in the upcoming months to account for 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 gas so i might have to sit look at it see where i can adjust but um yeah it's just interesting i remember one day going going to the gas station and it was like three three ninety five and then a week later it was four fifty five I was like, wait, what? That hurts. Yeah, that that, that, that definitely <laughs> that that 20 be like, I'm gonna go outside and ask my car, what'd you do with that 20 I gave you last week? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a gas is such a interesting thing because it, it also impacts truck drivers. There's yeah. literally truck drivers who are if you have high diesel in low rates, your truck drivers are not gonna want to drive. If your truck drivers stop driving, how are you going to get goods back and forth through the stores? So it's it's a it's a big issue where I'm I'm see I know a few truck drivers like yo I haven't I'm not taking these loads like if <laughs> if the rates is trash and then gas is high it it'll cost me more to just take this load because my it's going to cost me more to do the work and if you take that to the the individual the person right if my food is higher and my gas is higher then i'm not going to want to pay for these other things Mm -hmm. like maybe i don't get a new phone or maybe i downgrade downgrade my internet service or maybe i take less flights because of gas is higher you see what i mean so it, it impacts almost everything at that point like is if if I'm getting killed at the pump for another hundred dollars, if I'm getting killed by interest rates for my home for another three hundred, four hundred dollars, I'm gonna stop spending money. <laughs> like, right. I gotta chill. I gotta like, oh, we gotta gotta think about this for a second. Oh, we not gonna go to the movies. We're not gonna eat out because gas is too dang high. Our food is too expensive. We're gonna cook at home. And I don't. I don't think. I think that's gonna be bad news for a lot of companies. Yeah. And and you know what? This is before student loan, and I you know don't want to harp on. And then we that's the that's the other thing that's coming. It's kind of what we August is when student loans supposed to go back into effect. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. Um, From a political standpoint, there's no way. I think they're going to kick the can again. They're going to. I think that's going to be. If I'm a betting man, I think that's going to be the button that Biden is going to try to use during his uh, re-election campaign. Because if you shoot your shot too early on that one and the economy is still trash, you have no option. You're definitely taking an L. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of the student loan issue, the economy, gas prices, them's going to get slaughtered in the midterms. They're going to get destroyed in the midterm. So I'm curious as, as to what happens with the student loan thing, because you can't keep kicking that can forever. Truth be told, like you're going to have to shit or get off the toilet eventually Eventually. but they should have never even said the the thing that ticks me off like you got people hype for getting their student loans forgiven like think about it for a second like if it's not forgiven even if it's if it's not forgiven aren't you still technically mad because you like you were anticipating Anticipating, yeah Yeah, it's kind of like the whole the whole basis of of the campaign you know take care of the people that we're going to take care of student loans and you're like okay and do you feel taken care of (laughs) not at not at all not at all i feel like every everything is so targeted in what the forgiveness is and 
you know, not just to, I, I get it. We're, we're tiptoeing around. Okay. We're taking the, the lowest hanging fruit. Okay. We can, we can get rid of this. If you were um, targeted by a for, a for profit or whatever um, predatory loan, I'm like, all of them are predatory. Like look mm-hmm. at these interest rates in, in my opinion, you know, right. so um, all of them are predatory, but yeah, I don't feel taken care of at all. It's been so many, you, you'll get online and see, oh, this has been forgiven or this has been forgiven. And let me see if you qualify. And then you look like, nah, that's not me. So, right. Yeah. I don't feel taken care of at all. So they, <laughs> I, I saw this, uh, this other meme, they gave businesses, the PPP loans, they gave individuals like a $1,200 STEMI a couple times, but your food price has increased by 15%. Your gas has increased by 20%. Your rent has increased by 20%. And your properties and tax increased by 20%. So it's kind of, and that stuff is sticky. Like my property taxes are up 20%. I'm all like, bro, you think that you think counties are going to lower that? It's no different than what the airlines did, right? When we had the, uh, the, the after 9-11 and the fuel issue there, mm. they start, we, now you got limited bags. They charge you more for bags. You can't like, like all that stuff is going to stay high. So I'm curious on what they're going to do with the student loan stuff and how it's going to benefit people just to bring it full circle. Yeah. So as we, we talk about uh, loans and things there, we're noticing that more subprime borrowers are, mi- are missing loan payments. So people are starting before all this gets, you know, gets into effect. Um, with, with student loans, we're still missing that critical part and people are already falling behind on payments for car loans, personal loans and credit cards. Um, and, you know, and, and we haven't even seen all of all of what, you know, what the market can do, the economy is going to happen with the economy, even when you add student loans back in. So we're, people are already hurting with inflation, with the prices of gas going up, everything going up. So um it's, it's interesting to see and i think it's, it's showing that a share the share of subprime credit card and personal loans you know are at least 60 days late so it's people are are two months behind already and we're you know we're not even in i don't even think we're in the the, the midst of it we're we're oh. just in the beginning the beginning phases this made me the most nervous because okay if we're a credit-based society Mm-hmm. So I think in the last call, matter of fact, we start seeing credit card companies take a defensive stance where they start cutting limits. They start uh, tightening up. Right. If you remember during the pandemic, business funding dried up real quick. Like mm-hmm. you might have had a business line. You might have had a business line out. Um, those pretty much went away. Now I'm starting to see the same thing that happened in the last uh, recession where credit card companies start slashing your limit or completely closing cards because they're anticipating that, okay, if you fall on hard times, what you going to lean on? You're going to lean on your credit card and we don't want to have to deal with that. So mm-hmm. we're going to start cutting you down now. So if people are starting to fall behind on their payments before student loans are due and interest rates are going up and credit card companies are now slashing credit limits and gas is higher and food is higher, you're going to have to rely on sound financial planning and savings at some point in time. We all know that most Americans have less than a 5% savings, right? And they're living off credit. That's going to be an issue. Big, big issue. Because the $6 gas is cool. I got a credit card. I'm swiping, no swiping. Cool. I'm going to put that off. But now I'm 30 days late. I'm 60 days late. So now my credit score goes down. Now credit card companies are going to start reacting. Oh, we cutting your limit down to whatever your balance is. You can't use the credit card no more. How are you going to get gas? Right. Did you, you can't use that debit card. They ain't got nothing in it. So that's, that's the part that was scary to me. I was like, huh? Okay. So people still living a little high off the hog off the credit. But as soon as that gets cut and you're forced to actually make a decision i think you're gonna start seeing a whole lot more defaults it starts with little cars and credit cards and 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 stuff like that then it's going to move to rent then it's going to move to mortgages and then that's when i think housing starts to get super affected as well and then more importantly i think it's going to affect affect all these people who got those airbnbs in toro 
Think about how many people you know in your timeline got three, four, five cars. They're putting them on Toro. They got three, four, five Airbnbs. They put it out there. Now, what happens if I can't rent a car or vacation because we're in a recession and I need to watch my pennies and I'm staying home? What happens to your Airbnb? Airbnb. What happens to your 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 Toro car that dried up the the resale market and so on and so forth? Oh, it's going to be a problem. (laughs) <laughs> like if housing don't go and Airbnb, like I, I count Airbnbs in housing, but if single family homes don't go, but Airbnbs goes and rental cars goes because of the tour and things like that, oh, all this shit is going to come down like crazy. Even, even now I'm starting even looking like I was looking up the luxury goods market. Rolexes are starting to come down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Huh? Okay. So I'm like, uh, this shit is starting. It's, it's starting now. You can't run to, you can't use your, your Bitcoins down 70, 80, 90% because you, you, your shit coins then ran out. Your stocks are down 20% off of things now. It's about to get tight in the next year or so. And we still in war. And we possibly about to go into another war because uh, I believe the US says they're going to defend Taiwan, Taiwan if China starts to invade. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> gas high, food high, possibly a war going on now, possibly another war. Credit card defaults. Student loans coming. Shit gonna get real. Really real. Tighten your belt. Yeah, as I was gonna say, just be proactive, not reactive. All right. So, so the final, the final thing is, uh, why, why does your credit score different is different on Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion? Um, I think uh, so. This was on Reddit. It said uh, three scores are different on each platform. I looked at my my Experian app, and it says this for FICO eight. Um, Experian six fifty five, Equifax six eighty four, TransUnion six fifty four. On Credit Karma, Equifax is six seventy, and TransUnion is seven thirty three. That good old seven thirty three <laughs> on Credit Karma. Whew, go to the car dealership. No, I I mean just looking at that when I was I was looking at it is is right there. One is is FICO eight, and I know we we talked about versus versus the vantage. You're going to see different scores, especially because there are different FICO models, and each as you showed was that maybe about two weeks ago mm-hmm. that each FICO depending on the FICO model that you pull, you you can see a different score based on the information that that FICO model pulls in. So the reports can look identical as far as the information, but it all depends on what algorithm and which which um, scoring model is being used as far as to generate that score. All right. So in this per- person, they have a 733 on TransUnion and 654 on TransUnion with the FICO 8 model. The first thing that comes to mind was, well, we can, of course, there's two different scoring algorithms, FICO version 8 has five categories they just score slightly different than the vantage score that credit karma provides but the other thing i was concerned about was well were the reports pulled on the same day because your credit score is is basically a byproduct of the data in your credit report and your credit report can change daily so for example when this transunion was 654 for fico 8 and 733 on advantage if they were pulled 15 days apart maybe there's more accounts on there. Maybe something got closed, like we just talked about as far as things like that. You always want to compare apples to apples, right? So you want to compare your FICO 8 versus your FICO 8 on the same exact day. You don't want to compare FICO 8 versus Advantage. Now, granted, Credit Karma provides a vanity score, which is the Advantage score. Um, That's not going to be used for lending purposes. I'm not sure if any outlets that use Vantage for lending purposes anyway. So you always kind of want to go with the FICO score based off what you're applying for. You're going to have a mortgage score. You're going to have a credit card score. You're going to have an auto loan score. uh, You're going to have a general score. Even FICO 8 isn't necessarily used for lending purposes in that regard, unless it's some small thing. Um, So that's the first thing I would say. The other thing I would say is, well, why are your scores different between Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion? It would be too much like right to have one score to match them all. Um, Your data furnishers, your credit card, a.k.a. your credit card companies, the people you borrow from, they report to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion um, each month. Some of them only report to one. Some of them report to two. It literally it costs them money to report to the bureau. So some of them only select a place that they're going to send it to. Case in point, um, 
when we did a cash out refi of the home that we bought for our mother-in-law, they only report to Equifax, which I found interesting because it's a mortgage. Um, and I did that because I knew interest rates were going to go up. So I got, I squeezed out a 2.5% 30 year mortgage, which basically is like free money. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the reason why your scores will vary and they're billion dollar companies and they all want to sell your data. That's the, the last reason why your score will vary too. They don't want to, it'd be too, like I said, it'd be too much like right to have one score because everyone wants to make money and they want to sell your stuff. I think that was that was everything that uh that that we had so 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 i'll just answer this question here um and says i watched my credit scores on credit karma and it feels like my scores change daily why is this happening well credit karma has a direct feed into the credit bureaus so a lot of the credit monitoring systems they just buy data from transunion and then they use the api for equifax and experian i'm not sure uh credit karma provides experian they probably told them they don't want to work with them but they have the ability to get cheap reports, right? They can get their, they can get your credit report data for, they probably worked out a deal to get it for less than a penny. So it's nothing for them to provide you or score daily because how they truly make their money is they sell your information to people or they try to get you to sign up through their affiliate links. So if they can make, for example, $150 from you by selling your data, and they only got to provide you, let's say, 30 reports, 30 cents of credit reports. That's a smart business decision. So Credit Karma is one of those instances where they can provide you their score daily because of how they set it up with the credit bureaus. Um, is it needed to look at daily? No, you don't need a credit score daily um, at all. You can probably suffice by just looking every 35 days, comparing the old report to the new report. So I'll let you close out officially now. <laughs> oh, I was saying that that was everything we, we had. And then I did see that that one question there. So um, are we opening up for to see if anybody has questions? Uh, yeah, we got five more minutes. If you guys got questions, drop them in the chat. We can um, try to answer them here. I will also tell you guys to uh, make sure you check out. Let me share my screen here. While you're at it, I would say make sure you check this out. Let me log in here. Hopefully, I'm in the right account. Of course, I'm not. <laughs> uh, oh, show you where the office hours are because we do go live every Tuesday. Somebody did ask this question on the private. So when you log into your student dashboard, it should look something like this. And this is the yfsacademy.com, by the way. So when you log into your student dashboard, it looks something like this. You know, whatever last lesson you're in, you can hit resume, it'll go there. Um, but you also can see all the, we need to update this here, but <laughs> you can see all our uh, office hour replays here. You see all our 2022 replays here. If you want to go back deep, we got them all the way back from 2018 as well when we had replays there. But I also uh, highly recommend that you guys go and check out the How to Fix Your Credit course. So if you scroll down here, you're going to see a, ooh, where is it? How to Creep the Perfect Budget, Buy a Home. Oh, here it is. How to Fix Your Credit course should be the first one there. Um, one particular section you should check out, of course, everything is worth checking out. But say you were looking for some um, credit building cards. If you go to how to fix your credit downloads here, or is it the download section? Yep. If you go to how to fix your credit downloads, lesson number two, credit building links, you're going to be able to see some these updated links here. So every week, these get updated with the best cards for under 640, above 640. If you're looking for a balance transfer cards, the best 0% interest cards, best travel cards, and so on and so forth. So as your credit is improving, you can start adding some, I would say, forever cards to your mix versus just the merchant accounts or the credit building stuff to get you into the 640s and above. So I just want to kind of lay that out there. So I think we'll end it. There's a question that says, is it wise to pay off your mortgage? It depends on where you are in your financial journey. So there was one point in time where I think we talked about this. I thought it was a mistake for me to pay off my mortgage. Um, and the reason being was because my interest rate was 3.4%. Knowing what I know, I 
can easily invest that money either into my business or into the stock market or some other venture to make way more than 3.4%. But at the time, I really wanted to have like no debt and be debt free, right? It was like a badge of honor to pay off the mortgage. And then it was kind of like, damn, I paid off my mortgage. The stock market went up 28%, 21% one year, 28% the next year. I was like, damn, I could just been in the S&P 500. I would have made an additional $400,000 with the money I used to pay off the home. So it was like, damn, that was dumb. But I was debt free. So it really depends on where you are. Some people like to have zero debt. Some people like to have a little bit of leverage, a little bit of control over the funds. Um, so personal finance is personal. You have to decide on what makes the most sense for you. For me, it doesn't make sense. For a lot of people, it makes a ton of sense. Great question, by the way. All right. So let's just leave it off there. So appreciate you guys. Ty will have the replay up in the next 24 or 48 hours. He'll post it in the studio group and he'll post it in the area where you can watch it as well. Um, talk to you guys soon. Next week. <laughs>